Senator Rand Paul, how are you, sir? Very good, Simon. Thanks for having me. Uh, my absolute pleasure. So there was another debate uh, last night that they also uh, didn't invite you to. Uh, did you see that? We did, but I had to take special. I have to take medication before I can watch the Democrat uh, okay. debate because it sort of makes me a little bit nauseous. It, it is. Uh, it's scary it, on a real level. It is scary because uh, we have to be. You know, the fact is, one of them could be our president. Yeah, you know what I kept waiting for Hillary last night is I, I kind of want her to apologize to uh, Demetrius or Demarius Thomas's mom for putting her in jail for 15 years. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the 90s, the Clintons were big on putting everybody in jail for life sentences for uh, drugs. But then it turns out that a whole generation of young African-Americans have been put away, including Demarius Thomas's mom. Mm-hmm. She got 24 years in prison. Her His grandmother got two life sentences, yep. but a lot of it was based on the Clinton laws that they put forward in the 90s. Mm. And, uh, you know, the criminal justice reform and indeed uh, uh, drug crime reform is something that I focused on a, a lot on this show. For years now, we've been fighting a war on drugs. We've been spending quite literally billions of dollars every year. It is a war that I believe is completely unwinnable. We have uh, two amendments to the Constitution proving that prohibition doesn't work, and we need to find a different way. Uh, I I would actually legalize all of it. I don't expect you'll go there with me, uh, but I would legalize all of it and use all that money that we won't be spending fighting the war on uh, education. You know, we've educated cigarette smoking out of a lot of people uh, and uh, and treatment. I mean, that, that's surely got to be a better use of resources if we spend the money at all. Well, you know, as a physician, I think treating it as a health problem, treating it as an addiction, but not treating it as an incarceration problem. You're right. We spend billions of dollars putting people away. But the other disservice we do is we hurt people twice. One, when we put them in prison, mm-hmm. but two, then when we get out. So like Demarius Thomas's mom, do you think people are going to want to hire her? She's a convicted felon, has been mm-hmm. in jail for 15 years. It's difficult to get employment. It's difficult to get your right to vote back. And it really has been unfair to a whole segment of our population, not just black people, but brown people, poor people in general, poor whites, mm-hmm. uh, who didn't get treated the same. And a lot of it was the difference between crack cocaine and powered cocaine to White kids were using the same amount of powder cocaine as black kids were yep. using crack, but they got the black kids were getting 15, 20 years in prison. So while I don't agree with the president on much, this is something I do agree with the president on. He granted clemency to, Mar- to Damaris Thomas's mm-hmm. mom, and I agree with it. Well, surely we have to uh, treat cocaine use in exactly the same way. Whatever we decide to do about it, uh, crack cocaine and powdered cocaine have to be treated the same way. It's uh, it's ridiculous that we don't do that. It's still 18 to 1. We fixed it. It used to be 100 to 1. Mm-hmm. So if you had one one hundredth of the amount of crack cocaine as powder cocaine, you'd get the same sentence. Now it's 18 to 1. But you're right. It ought to be 1 to 1. Cocaine's cocaine. If it's going to be illegal, we shouldn't have a disparity in sentencing for a type of a drug that's been primarily used by African Americans. I want uh, I want to play you something uh, now because uh, it struck me over the weekend when the president spoke to the nation yet again uh, that uh, he actually went into the archives, the White House archives, and borrowed a speech and just changed a word here or there. I want, I want you to listen to this and see what you make of it. Before I take your questions, I'd like to say just a word about the framework with North Korea that Ambassador Gallucci signed this morning. This is a good deal for the United States. North Korea will freeze and then dismantle its nuclear program. South Korea and our other allies will be better protected. The entire world will be safer as we slow the spread of nuclear weapons. South Korea, with support from Japan and other nations, will bear most of the cost of providing North Korea with fuel to make up for the nuclear energy it is losing. And they will pay for an alternative power system for North Korea that will allow them to produce electricity while making it much harder for them to produce nuclear weapons. The United States and international inspectors will carefully monitor North Korea to make sure it keeps its commitments. Only as it does so will North Korea fully join the community of nations. So what do you think? Did he uh, did he steal the speech? <laughs> well, one of the interesting things also is some of the people that negotiated the North Korean agreement mm-hmm. negotiated the Iran agreement. Yeah. And uh, the one distinction I've been making about this is that if Iran adheres to it, he'll look wonderfully uh, – prescient. He will have made a great agreement. My problem all along has been, do we have sufficient leverage to coerce, convince, or push them to adhere to it? 
And I think with all the money gone, all the money distributed back to Iran, and with the sanctions gone, I don't know that there is sufficient leverage. Now, maybe we get lucky and Iran does not behave the way North Korea did, but there's still a lot about Iran's behavior that leads us to suspect maybe they're not completely honest with us and maybe they don't want to be part of the the nation, the uh, the group of civilized nations. However, there are some bright spots. I think the release of uh, the prisoners is a bright spot. And, uh, well, well it was a swap. Happens. We need to call it what it was. It right. was a swap. Uh, we gave them back some very bad people and we got our hostages back because they were hostages. Right. But I'd say that uh, at the same time, we don't need to make it just about uh, always saying, oh, the president's a dastardly dude, which he is. I think we have to admit that uh, there is cause for celebration getting our people home. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I don't disagree with the word you said uh, regarding getting our people back. Uh, I, I think I would have got them back before I released uh, the first sanctions, uh, before we sat down with them. Um, uh, that's called doing a deal. I, I think I'd have done that first. Uh, but we gave gave that up. Then, of course, we had the, uh, the humiliation with our sailors, and we can go on and on and on. Uh, but this agreement, I mean, you know, the the IAEA, um, uh, IAEA, yeah, uh, they said, hey, yeah, uh, Iran's in compliance. But part of that report of the Iran being in compliance is the samples that Iran took at their own military base. Uh, we're supposed to rely on those as being accurate. Uh, I don't. What do you think? Well, yeah, you know, there is going to be some question whether or not we're going to let Iran, you know, uh, take the sampling and what will happen from this. But the the fact of the matter is we still have the IAEA in Iran, and it is better than not. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still hopeful that the negotiations and the agreement that Iran will adhere to them. And where I do differ from some Republicans is some Republicans say immediately rip up the agreement. Let's be done with it when we have a new Republican president. But I guess I would take a different approach. I would actually look and determine whether or not they're in compliance before I would say, oh, we're done with the agreement. In the middle of a conversation with Senator Rand Paul, he still wants to be our president. Let's talk about uh, the Republican Party. Uh, you know about me. I'm a, an independent conservative. I've never been a member. I never will be a member of any political party. Um, but let me ask you this. Uh, from the very beginning of this process, I could not believe that the RNC uh, ceded how this was going to work to the networks. Uh, you were excluded at the last debate. Um, it remains to be seen if you're excluded at the next debate. Uh, the way to have done this was so simple. It, it defies belief that they didn't go down that road. With 16, 17 candidates, uh, there should have been a draw. There should have been two uh, equal debates, because I agree 16 is unwieldy. No one's going to get, going to, get to say anything significant uh, of equal standing, uh, maybe not even on the same night, maybe two day days apart. But that's how it should have been done. It hasn't been done that way. You were excluded last time. A lot of your supporters were very upset. Uh, you chose not to go. I think you made the right choice, by the way. I think you got more press for doing it. Um, what happens now? I mean, if they exclude you next time, you've said uh, what you did last time is going to seem like very quiet. You know, we're going to push very hard with the Republican National Committee to say that if you want a bigger party, you need to be more inclusive. If you artificially set and designate different tiers, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. If you artificially exclude people from the debate based simply on polling and nothing else, we think that's unfair. And uh, we think they'll be sorry because in the end, people can vote for the Republican candidate. They can vote for a third party candidate. They can stay in the Republican Party. They can leave the Republican Party. And our supporters are very, very unhappy with the Republican National Committee right now. And they're mm -hmm. going to have to decide, do they want a bigger party or a smaller party? Do they want uh, my fans and my voters in the party or do they want to push us out of the party? Mm -hmm. would, it be, would it have been better if you'd have uh, spoken up this way when the likes of Rick Perry and Bobby Jindal were excluded earlier on? We did. We didn't do a lot publicly, but behind the scenes when they ask us mm -hmm. what about the criteria, we did argue for more inclusive criteria throughout. We have for six months. Okay. Uh